everyone. It is uh, Laura Nicole with Stone, uh, with Cold Reads, uh, episode six, and today we are going to be uh, doing chapter six, part one. Um, I really like having these episodes be about a half an hour long, and that works out to be intro, outro, and about three minutes of dialogue, no more than four. And chapter six is about six pages, so I'm going to break some of these chapters up. Um, as they get longer. Uh, so this week I have uh, with me on the show one of my dear friends, again, locally from the Pioneer Valley, uh, Jonra. Hi. I'm a dear friend. Yay. Yay. So Jonra, <laughs> tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Well, I volunteer a lot at, the, at Valley Free Radio. I, um, I, uh, I'm on the board and I I do programming. I'm director of programming and operations, meaning I fix stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, at the station, I have a show called Press Start to Continue. I love that um, show. It's actually after after everybody's done watching watching this. It's on at nine. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're listening in real time, you can go to valleyfreeradio.org and listen. Uh, but it's uh, video game remixes and nerdcore hip hop. It is. Um, the most fun show. I <laughs> I really enjoy a lot of the music shows on Valley Free Radio, which is how John Ray and I met, and we both mm -hmm. serve on the board. Um, uh, and Press Start Continue is my jam. <laughs> that and I Heart J Rock. Oh yeah, I listen to that one too. Sometimes it's. I'm looking it's... forward to the new shows that are coming too. Oh me too, me too. It's um. Have you listened to uh, Existence Decay? Not yet. On Sunday, he he wanted to, he plays mostly gift sets. Nice. I Is just, it super weird? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I'm at practice. I'm I'm also in an acapella group uh, called the Connotations. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. and usually we're we're having practice during that time. So right. um <laughs> we'll see. Gift maybe sets. he'll do a podcast or something. Ah, maybe I'll catch the last hour at some point. Um <laughs> Uh, but let's see. Um, I've been at the station since 2013 um, mm -hmm. with my, and that's where I started the show. Um, I've since started to program another show called Civil Politics, and that's on uh, Fridays at seven. Uh, and uh, basically, the way I describe it is crossfire without jerks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, so we talk about like current events and stuff, and there are normally a lot of nerdy uh, jokes, very right. nerdy jokes. <laughs> we I keep wanting too. to do an, a, like a, an April first episode where we just talk about the politics of of the twenty fourth century century <laughs> federation. Oh, um, <laughs> that'd be awesome! I I, I really want to do that. So <laughs> yeah. Um, but you can uh, listen to start, uh, Press Start to Continue on starttocontinue.com, or you can go to civilpoliticsradio.com and listen to uh, the Civil Politics podcast that we put out every week. Awesome. And I completely forgot to say to, uh, to send this to the um, uh, Valley Free Radio page. So I'm going to do that <laughs> real quick. Um, or actually, if you want to do that, while well, I start reading, because... Send what this, to what now? Uh, send the link for this show oh, okay. to, uh, to the Valley for Radio page, because, oh my goodness, we're both on YouTube live right now. <laughs> my God. Hi, guys. I know. My God. It's huge. No, wait, what? What are we talking about now? So, um, for people at home who have I been following, where's the link? <laughs> uh, go to the go to the Creative Valley page, and oh, right, I've got right. the link there. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, for those of you who just saw that, um, basically, I found that my phone um, has actually the best audio and the best video. Uh, for this page. So I'm doing this on my phone, um, even though uh, my computer is running and um, will be showing the words, which I'm going to switch to. Um, as we get started with 
Stonebriar Case Files Bad Alchemy, Chapter 6. That is, that is what it is. That is what it is, and that is what we see. Chapter 6. Here and I... Mute yourself. I can do that. <laughs> all right. And just don't forget to come back in. Oh, I should probably tell you all. Uh, Jamra is going to be playing the part of the Master Stargazer. Um, he is about a thousand years old. Um, and he, of the elves, the elves are very kind of snooty. They're kind of like, oh, you're not an elf. Meh. Um, but there are two elves that are going to be introduced that are not quite that way. Um, one is Eric Moonrunner, and the other is the Master Stargazer. The Master Stargazer loves being around young people. He loves um, he loves learning new things. Um, essentially, as I was describing it, I realized, oh, hey, you know what? Uh, this is going to be uh, Dumbledore and Arthur Weasley in one person. And... Uh, and genre felt up to the task. So uh, that is where we are going to go from here. So now I'm actually going to get started. <laughs> Chapter six. From the moment I entered their territory, I could feel their eyes on me. Then off in an instant, I could feel their eyes on me, then off in an instant. While it is true that they do have hunters of great skill, all of them are so absorbed with their latest felling of a foe that they can't take the time to actually interrogate those who cross into their borders. I was not enough of a threat to garner their prolonged attention. Beatrix Stonebriar, the voice called from the terrace above. I was a bit taken aback to see my old friend Eric Moonrunner. He hopped off the terrace a full 40 feet from the ground. With bent knees, he rolled toward me, coming up sure-footed as though he had just walked up to me. Show off, I murmured under my breath. I like to make an entrance. He held out his hand and let me land on it. Bringing me to his face, we exchanged kisses on the cheek. Once, he had been a little more than a friend but less than a lover. We hadn't wanted to ruin the cohesiveness of the watch. When I was able to look him in the eye again, he asked, I asked, what in the name of the three are you doing here? I thought you were working with the SMC on the giant preservation bill. Once the society got wind of your attack, all non-essential personnel were sent home. The riots are getting bad everywhere. His eyes were wider than usual as he asked me, how are you doing? I read the, excuse me. How are you doing? I read the reports and I just, I'm fine, Eric. I had more friends that day than enemies. I smiled as reassuringly as I could. I had no idea how hard that news would hit him let alone the effect on the magical society, let alone the effect on the society of magical creatures. He smiled at me and I was, he smiled at me. It was a look I had not seen in many years. They seemed to shake him, then he seemed to shake himself from his reverie and come back to the present. So what are you doing here? I would have thought you'd be furiously working at the police department, catching criminals and whatnot. Administrative leave. What's that? It's what they call it when you become a liability and your emotional state is called into question. I shook my head. Um, have they met you? Working on a case keeps you sane. Well, relatively. I gave him a playful slug in the hand. <laughs> anyway, the heat at the department was putting my colleagues in danger, so I came back to the wood until the trial next week. But when I came back, Miss Stonebriar? 
a woman said from the doorway of a treehouse above us. It was one of the elven ministers, Milena Lorfind. Ah, good. I was hoping it would be you. I was hoping it would be you that the fairies would send. We have heard of the tragedy at your briar. The trees have not been at ease since the news came to us and would much like to discuss the matter with you. And I would like much like and I would much like to discuss the matter with you. Of course, Lady Lorfind, I bound in acknowledgement. Do you know if the stargazer do you know if there is a stargazer that we might consult with? I have details that are perplexing me. Already on the path? Good, she smiled. Sometimes I think you should have been an elf with all of your initiative. Come, let us seek out Master Stargazer. You are welcome to join us as well, Moonrunner. The way she said his name, there was no questions that the elves still took his presence with a grain of salt. Like she could keep me from going with you. He whispered in my ear. I couldn't help but chuckle at that. Gratefully, Eric let me sit on his shoulder while we walked up and across the canopy of the silver bar. Despite the inhabitants being friendly, there was a beauty that was unmistakable. Trees shine in tones of silver and bright platinum. It made me think of some of the skyscrapers I had seen in the bigger cities when I went for additional training. They had reached the great open sky. They had reached for the great open sky as if they needed light to survive. In the case of the forest, that was entirely true. I'd forgotten how this place looked in the daylight. Eric whispered back to me. That's because we were always leaving and coming back after dark. He poked me then, and we both got a good giggle out of it. When Lady Lorfind turned a steely gaze at us, we did our best to stop. Being in Eric's company made me feel like a youngling all over again. I did not feel as tired or world-worn with him. And given his consistent smiles when he looked at me, I could sense that he felt the same. We climbed the branches. We climbed the branch woven stairs for quite a while. This path was the most direct to the observatory, but it seemed to take forever. It wove around and between trees, climbing ever higher until we got almost at the until we were almost at the top of the canopy. The tree for the observatory itself was an oak. It was sturdy enough to hold all of the instruments and books out at such an angle from the rest of the tree without endangering the population below. The old soothsayer and astrologer was at his desk, as he was wont to be during the daylight, poring over what looked like an instruction manual. <laughs> Confound these humans. He grumbled. Why can I not? Why can they not see? Oh, no. Why cannot they send these things ready-made? I aren't they supposed to be? Aren't they supposed to make it easier to watch the stars? Lady Lorfind cleared her throat. Master Stargazer. Ah, uh, Lady Lorfind. He stood up straight and brushed the packing peanuts off of his legs that gilded his coat. <clears throat> um, a pleasure to meet you. Uh, visit, a pleasure to have you visit my abode. As you can see, I am in the midst of adding to my considerable knowledge by harnessing some of the human technologies. Quite fascinating, these humans. Found a way to look at the stars with glass and mirrors without our higher brain functions. As interesting as that is, she tried to steal the elder one back from his tirade. I have brought Beatrix Stonebriar and Eric Moonrunner, who are seeking your expertise. 
The elf tried to gracefully push his books out of the way to greet us as Lady Lorfine sat back down the stairs. My dear Beatrix, it has been too long since I've seen you. Nearly fifty years or so? Something like that. It is good to see you again. And you, my dear boy. He said, turning to Eric. How has your work in the human world been treating you? Uh, still getting into trouble, eh? He gave him a knowing wink. Eric winked back at the old elf. I save all my troublemaking for when I'm back home. It gives you all something to talk about when I go back. <laughs> Master Stargazer chuckled. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, you wouldn't want our lives to get too boring, would you? He looked between the two of us. But you do look troubled. Tell me, young ones, why have you come seeking out the old stargazer? We gave him a detailed overview of what had happened, starting from my attempted murder, all the way to the hairs I found at the original crime scene. I know book and showed Master Stargazer the pattern that the tulip heads had made. Master Amberstone thought it might be a constellation of some sort, but he wasn't sure. Ah, the good old Rickson, always thinking. He's got a good mind, that one, and I think he chose his pupil wisely. The compliments he was dishing out would have been suspicious from any other elf. However, the stargazer was not like other elves. In fact, he was not as wizened as he... In fact, were he not as wizened as he was, he would have fit quite nicely in with the others of the watch. However, his skills were in his study, watching the stars. He was the epicenter of knowledge for his race and most other races in the North. As such, he had more frequent contact with other races. My guess was that all of that contact, combined with the knowledge of the ages, made him rather like an eccentric and endearing old uncle. He tried to study the design that Rickson had designed, but he was having difficulty as he squinted at the fairy-sized notepad. Oh, I'm sorry. I cast a quick enlargement spell so that the notepad was a more comfortable size for him. Ah, that's much better. He exclaimed. Now, let me see. He looked over the design intently, measuring distance with his fingers and making notes. And making notes to the side of the design. He muttered as he turned to reference his star charts. The elder... The elder pulled scroll after scroll, handing each discarded one to Eric. Shortly, his arms were full and awkwardly balancing somewhere around 20 charts. Watching his odd balancing act. <laughs> we'll start putting them away, you nitty. Goodness gracious me, did you think I meant for you to just hold them? I couldn't help but chuckle by the way he chided Eric. He apparently had heard he apparently heard that and shot me a devious look i knew i would pay for that later hmm, now that's odd the stargazer seemed stumped at the look the stargazer seemed stumped at the look at a specific scroll it was not a star chart what was it i asked well, now I, I pulled this scroll. I pulled, uh, I pulled this scroll on the whim. I, I had recently been visited by a young lady elf who was seeking some information about the star alignment from yesterday eve. Uh, she would not say what the reason was for, but as I recall, she was referencing a chart that was not about the stars, but it did have a rune on it. Uh, one that, if we connected the dots like so. He drew several lines together, connecting the design into cr in cross lines. Yes, that's the rune I saw on her scroll. Do you know who she was? I asked, attempting to hide my anticipation. Hmm. No, actually, she was from the Central Tribe. 
She said her name was, uh... He thought for a moment. I... I do not know who she was. I thought I knew her name, but now... It's all right, Master. Eric spoke the words I was thinking again. There cannot be that many central elves in the bark. We can find out. Thank you for your time. All oh, right, of course, young ones. And please do not be strangers. You know all you all keep me young. We gave our farewells and took our leave of the observatory. And that is the end of chapter six. Yay! Yay. <laughs> um, so, Jara, what did you think? It was fun. What did you think? Yeah? I, I wish I was doing a full cast of um, Stonebrae Case Files because you make an excellent star caser. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, the the past few guests I've had on have been perfect for the roles that they read. That I'm kind of like, oh, why didn't I do that? <laughs> um, you know, when I eventually make this into a audio drama or something, then we'll talk. Oh, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I I've never done um, um, voice voice acting before, so this was this was pretty cool. What? You're kidding, right? Not at all. The first time we got into radio was basically four years ago. Oh, man. I tell stories to um, the kids take care, but that's pretty much it. Honey, we need to do some talking. Because <laughs> <laughs> your, your voice needs to be out there, dude. Aww. And not just in a commentary way. <laughs> uh, well, thank cool. you. Cool. What? Well, tell everybody where they can find you online. Uh, you can go to starttocontinue.com and you can listen to all of my past shows uh, going back a few years. And I also post uh, videos um, by Popular Geekery. And uh, you can also go to civilpoliticsradio.com and you can find all the episodes of the political show I do there. Sometimes I pop up and give my opinion because obviously I'm right, uh, <laughs> even though I'm just the engineer. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter. It's at Press Start VFR. And I talk about video games and sometimes comics. And sometimes I just uh, talk about politics and stuff because I'm addicted. <laughs> and the with the climate of right now, it is good to be involved. And um, that's how and we try to be involved. Exactly. And uh, by Resonant Moon Audiobook Solutions, you can find it online at resonantmoon.com. Um, and I can be found on Twitter at Nicole, Nicole Audio. You can also email me if you want to be on the show or if you submit a story for the show. Starting at the end of August, we will be uh, having people uh, submit short stories and we'll be doing stories other than my own. Um, so please make sure to uh, email. The email is laurenicoleaudio at gmail.com. I want to thank my guest, uh, Jamra, for... Uh, being here for being awesome and um, thanks for having also me be on. sure to check out uh, valleyfreeradio.org which is uh, where we both uh, volunteer um, and serve on the board and there are a ton of amazing shows um, there and I will post all of these links in the show notes um, shortly because I have not done so yet if you're watching the live show um, so thanks again for watching. Uh, I do want to let you all know that this podcast is covered under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License, which means that you can share it, you can download it, you just cannot uh, edit it, and you have to link back to this YouTube page. Um, so please do that. If you like what I'm doing, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Leave comments in the comments section. I would love to hear from you. 
Um, and thanks again to my guest. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. I will see you tomorrow with part two of chapter six. And who knows who shall be my guests then. <laughs> Take care, everybody. <laughs> Bye, everybody.